call the meeting to order. Who would like to um, make a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. Great, and is there a second? We need a second. <laughs> I guess we do, right? We could probably approve it with uh, consent of the hearing. Hearing no objections, the okay. uh, appro agenda is approved. Hearing no objection, the agenda is approved. Sorry, I'm still still learning the procedural stuff. Um, and then the comments by the chair, I have no comments. So let's move right into the CVC or CVRPC municipal consultation. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Christian Meyer, director at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'm here with Nikki Sabado, who's one of our community development planners. Um, we're here for a couple of reasons. Um, first and foremost, we have a statutory requirement to check in twice every eight years with each of our municipalities. Uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission encompasses the, the towns of uh, Washington County plus three towns in Orange County, the town of Orange, Washington, and Williamstown. Um, but it's also an advantageous time to check in with you all as you are working towards a new plan update. Um, I think it's an opportunity to get on the same page, make sure we uh, get in the loop and can follow the work you're doing, because ultimately uh, the regional planning commissions approve municipal plans. So we want to make sure that if we have any comments, we can get those to you as early as possible um, and get those integrated um, into, into your work so it wouldn't hold up any of that. Uh, access. Now, having an approved plan has its benefits because it opens up the door to um, state programs, funding options that Mike can tell you all about. He's obviously well versed in all of these things. Um, but I think um, at this point, what might be a helpful starting point is maybe just learning a little bit more about your update process. Um, and if it's a total rewrite or if there are other, if it's a total rewrite, the reason I ask is because in 2017, obviously your plan was reviewed and approved by the Regional Planning Commission, um, showing that at that time it met all statutory requirements and showed progress towards um, meeting the planning goals. Um, so I'm just curious to hear where you guys are and what direction you're going in that rewrite process. So yeah, I guess I could jump in to just kind of give some of the, a little bit of the summary. So this will be a complete rewrite of the zoning or of the city plan. Um, the original, uh, the existing city plan that in effect will be in effect till December of next year. Um, that plan is written I wouldn't even say in a traditional format. It is certainly a uh, written hard copy PDF style. Um, but we chose to uh, redo this one in a uh, web format. So we're going to be using storyboards. And if you stay for the second half, you can start to see the first three chapters as they're starting to get pulled together. So we've got um, one section is all the storyboards and another section are all the implementation strategies. So both of them were kind of individual decisions that were made by the planning commission in 2016 when we started the process it's been a long process to go through an update but the idea was to have an online plan because it would have better access to the public people more likely to read it a lot of the um, plans that are kind of the more award winning plans nationally uh, tend to be more online plans as opposed to the traditional paper documents um, so that's that was our move in that direction. The second thing we wanted to do is to have more actionable plans and to get ourselves out of having strategies that talked about um, encouraging or supporting things. We didn't want to go and have those types of kind of useless strategies and policies in there. We wanted to be much have a much more actionable plan and have it really make sure everything is tied together. So you've got your aspiration. It breaks into a number of goals 
And then there are specific strategies to implement goals. And they were really designed so that way you could kind of walk right through. Um, and uh, a lot of times in plans, we'll have stuff where you'll see there'll be a goal and a whole bunch of strategies. And you could read the strategies and say, these have nothing to do with the goal above or vice versa. So we really wanted to make sure there was a, a tie in between all the pieces. And so I think we did a good job on the implementation strategies piece. Uh, it's been a little bit of a, of a back and forth because we were on the storyboards because we are trying to kind of keep them to that limited size of a online storyboard, but still get all the content that's needed to meet the statutory requirements. So we'll, we'll kind of have a few pieces we'll need to probably check off later on as we go along to make sure that we're not missing a major component that would impact that. Most of those we would probably add in as additional studies. A lot of them might be a study or something that we'd have a link to as opposed to actually writing something into the document. So, so safe to an overview. Safe, okay. So safe to assume if we see, well, um, so the storyboards w will be the draft documents, draft, draft chapters. And would a, would a good progress to work with you all, would it be, you know, once you, like tonight you're having, what, a public input meeting on three chapters, um, do you guys view those as uh, fluid chapters at this point, or is this a time for us to jump in and maybe look through them and start giving you guys comments on if we see any um, any missing pieces relevant to the state statute? Yeah, you're probably welcome to start looking through them now. Um, if you've got the time and the resources to, to start looking through them now, that's not a bad time to start um, getting those types of input early uh, into the process. Uh, so the, where we've gotten to now is we developed all of the storyboards and all the chapters working with various committees. We have 23 committees in the city of Montpelier, so we have no shortage of volunteers and committees. So we worked with all of them to develop these chapters. Um, so we've got historic resources, housing, and arts and culture tonight. Each one of them has a committee. They help put these together. Those then went to the planning commission who then refined and, re and revised them. And now we're going to the broader public to go through and make sure the public agrees with what say the housing committee came up with or the housing chapter and the housing strategy. So um, that's kind of the place we're at now is to try to start doing that more broader outreach. Um, we didn't start with the, with the public. Some planning processes will start with the broad public input to, to develop a plan. We didn't think that was as efficient, especially if we wanted to make an actionable plan, because a lot of the public doesn't really understand how to implement the plan, which is why we worked with the committees who tend to be either more involved citizens or um, themselves. A lot of our committees are made up of people who work at the state. So our housing committee may have people who work at Downstreet or work at uh, VCFA or v, uh, VHFA or VHCB or in a number of places. So we've got a lot of housing folks on the housing committee. And so that's why we did it that way. Great. All right. Well, we'll just, we'll, if Mike, if you don't mind just letting us know when you're, um, when, a, when a, a, uh, what a slew of chapters move into this review phase, we'll just start monitoring remotely and, take a look and see if we can offer you any comments early on. Um, oh, do you want to jump in, Nikki? Yeah, I have a question. Um, in On your storyboards, you have um, a link for the implementation plan. Will that be available soon to review or? Uh, yes, so that's actually already on the on the city's website so we'll kind of touch we'll touch on that in the presentation tonight when i go through it i'll show where the where the storyboards are and where the implementation strategies are okay great thank you um and with um sorry just for reviewing the three chapters now what is on your website is currently what we're reviewing and comparing to statute. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And ultimately our, what is it? You'll get to, a, at some point, I imagine you'll, you'll finalize on some sort of semi-final product that would go to maybe six months before you go to public hearing on the final product. Does that mean? Yes. Yeah, so the, yeah, yeah, the plan right now is that we, we broke, We've got a lot of the chapters done. 
in fact, there's only one chapter that's not done, but to start getting public input, we didn't want to overwhelm the public. So we broke it into three groups of three and then one group of two. So this is the first group of three that we're working on. And then hopefully next month, we'll start working on the next group of three. And so the hope is that we'll be all the way through that review by the time we get to, say, October. And then the Planning Commission will have to take a meeting, two meetings, three meetings, whatever it takes to go through and review all the comments. And we'll hopefully be making some of the comments and changes along the way. But depending on what we hear, um, hopefully people are generally in support of what we're doing. They might have specific comments. Um, we'll be able to make those changes and then move into the public hearing phase. Um, so there's plenty of time between now and then for us to, to make a lot of changes. So we're looking for a, a large window of input before we do those final changes for going to public hearing. Um, do you have any more questions or Nikki on this part? Not right. Okay. Not right. Not right no. And the planning commission as a whole, any questions about our role in this, our involvement, why we're here? All right. Well, then part of the other reason we come is is how we can support each of our municipalities work towards implementing their plan. So um, with the next five minutes or so, if that's fine, I just want to go over some of the big programs we have right now that may help uh, the Planning Commission or the city think about how it wants to work towards implementing its municipal plan. Um, top of the list, just where we are right now coming out of last year's flooding is um, a pre, it's called the river program, which is not an ideal name because it's really not about the river. This is a program to help municipalities uh, complete the pre-engineering work necessary for a hazard mitigation planning grant. Um, hazard The state of Vermont's uh, on track to get $90 million for construction projects with this direct purpose of mitigating risk from, from the future event. Um, so to get to that application phase for the big for the big money, an application needs a certain amount of engineering completed beforehand. So right now we're really, we are the facilitator for this part of the state for uh, Montpelier and Barrie, looking to just any ideas, projects that might be uh, sitting on the shelf, um, concepts, trying to collect all that information and get it into the hopper so we can put it before uh, an engineering team run by uh, SLR, which is Roy Shift, a Montpelier resident, some of you may know him, um, to kind of filter that down for cost benefit and, and, and identify the most effective projects that are, that are going to have the, the highest impact on lowering the waters in Montpelier and Barrie uh, in future storm events. Um, so that you can reach out through either through myself or our emergency management planner, Keith Cubbin, who I'm sure Mike's familiar with, um, if there are some projects that have come out of uh, the planning commission that you feel should be reviewed at this point. Um, another program we have is the clean water service provider. This is a non-regulatory clean water implementation projects. Uh, so regulatory clean water project would be maybe something required through Act 250. Um, this would be more the municipality sees an opportunity to, um, through plantings, uh, berm removal, or some other sort of discrete engineering project, uh, lower phosphorus input into, into the Winooski and more importantly, the larger Champlain Basin. Um, we are the quiz for Basin 8. Basin 8 is the Winooski Winooski River Water Basin, so the Winooski and all its tributaries. Another program you all may be aware of um, is the work we do for e energy efficiency um, and um, energy efficiency and resilience. There's the, the MERP program, Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Um, I'm fairly sure that Sam Lash, our energy planning has, planner, has already been working with your energy committee. Um, but if there are other projects that are um, that this committee is working towards that would fit into that climate slash energy basket, uh, reach out. We might be able to still identify some uh, opportunities to advance those either planning initiatives or actual implementation projects. Um, 
Next one is Brownfields. This is a program. We have a Brownfields committee, which is, uh, you know, polluted contaminated sites that might otherwise be brought back into the market to create new housing or park space. Um, we have a regional Brownfields committee, a regional Brownfields program. Uh, we're kind of figuring out what direction that's going to go, likely going to pursue some federal funding, EPA funding to increase that pool of funds we have available to uh, the municipalities in central Vermont. Um, so similarly, if they're identified locations within Montpelier, I think there's going to be an opportunity to help advance that planning work um, in coming years. And the last one I have on my list, list is um, for your... I guess really can be thinking at at a planning planning level at this point is public transit, um, generally transit. Currently, the central Vermont is um, Washington County is served by Green Mountain Transit. Uh, transit in general across the country, and certainly GMT is no no. Um, exception to this is heading towards a fiscal cliff. Basically, we were on a bad track in 2019, pandemic came along and a bunch of federal money propped up all our transit systems. Um, but now that money's run out. And so we're really trying to figure out how to plan that route forward. Uh, so that hasn't impacted Washington County yet. But I think as we look out into 2026, we're going to be having conversations about how we move people uh, in, in central Vermont and uh, where are our priorities. So also something to put on your, your, your horizon as we look out into the future and try to plan for whether it's um, uh, fewer greenhouse gas emissions or just um, less traffic, less congestion. Um, our, the, the weakness in our transit services is gonna create new hurdles and obstacles for us to work around. Uh, so there's just a couple things on my list I thought I'd bring up. Um, most of them are, are carrots, opportunities for Montpelier to advance the planning work you're already doing. And then transportation is just kind of beginning to sound that alarm and get folks to start thinking about how we might go forward. Comments, questions, concerns? We, oh, go ahead, Mike. Looks like you came up. Oh, no, I was just going to okay. go and see if there's anything else that, that you wanted to add in. Not at this, not at this point necessarily, just that, you know, we are located about 25 feet from City Hall and are always here to talk to our, um, our member municipalities and ha happy to help you work towards implementing your, your planning goals. Yeah, well, thank you for that. That was really helpful and informative and for taking the time to to our meeting. Happy to attend. May stay on and, and for a little of your hearing. Yep. Yeah, and uh, just for the Planning Commission, there, our staff, a lot of our staff uses um, the resources at the RPC quite a bit. They'll see me over there a lot for various maps and pieces. I was just over there today for the We've got growth center renewal, so we needed maps. So uh, whether it's maps or transportation, uh, there's a lot of direct connections, when, especially when it comes to transportation funding. That goes through the RPC as well. So um, we've got representatives uh, on what is sometimes referred to as the TAC, Transportation Advisory Committee. So if you ever hear somebody referring to the something going to the TAC, that's what they're referring to as the Transportation Committee, subcommittee of the RPC. So. We definitely, as staff, spend a lot of time and resources working with them as well. So, well, great. Thank you all very much. And yep. as I said, we'll be in touch. We'll be uh, following the development of the plan and see where it goes. Thank you. Got a couple minutes here. I don't know if we want to take a minute to approve the minutes or if we just want to wait for the six o'clock for people to jump in. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Um, what were the, the minutes were from oh, April 22nd and May 13th, at least maybe. I don't know if somebody yeah, wants to. I don't think we had them. the May 3rd. I don't think we have the May 13th minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so they didn't. Yeah. They, the, person who did the minutes because it was 
it, the way it was recorded, it was very difficult to get the minutes. So we didn't find out about that till recently. So we'll have to go and um, work oh, back yeah. through the notes to get the minutes. Yeah, but I forgot that was the first hearing. Um, well, does anyone want to move approval of the April 22nd minutes if you have a chance to review? I'll, uh, I'll I'll move to approve the minutes. They look correct to me. Okay, hearing to get his mic, is this one of the instances where I can say hearing no objections? <laughs> well, I can, no, I, we need need a second no, on I, this I'll one. move we to approve. I'll move to approve in a minute. Okay. I'm sorry, I thought I said that. Maybe my mic. No, no, no you we got I'll move. I'm just, we don't have a second. Oh, oh, Maria will second, but you don't have any volume, Maria. I don't know why. Oh. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Or raise your hand if you have no volume. <laughs> okay, minutes approved. All right. So now we're getting almost to six. So that's that's good. We can kick off the public hearing. Um, public input session. Oh, sorry. I'm, I trip I trip that up all the time. I say public hearing, and I say master plan, and then I get caught up. It's like no, it's the city plan. This is public input. So. We keep reminding ourselves so. Okay. City plan public input. All right. I'll just wait one more minute since it's still officially 559 on my computer. Oh. Okay. Just turn to six. So um Welcome everyone. I'm Ariane Kassam. I'm the chair of the planning commission. And thanks for attending the public input meeting on our first three chapters of the, or first three draft chapters of the city plan. Um, this has been, yeah, a, couple, a few years in the making. We've worked hard with uh, the various city committees to try and come up with some drafts and we're excited to hear um, comments and feedback. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mike Miller, the planning director. Okay, and thank you for coming in. So um, a couple of quick things. Um, if you can, if you want to participate, just use the raise hand function. That'll make it a lot easier for us to go and keep track of folks who want to participate. We'll get those input in there. Um, let's see. Or luck of being in the fire station or the police station. Sirens going off. All right, share screen. All right, so. Tonight we're gonna to be going through, this is our um, city plan virtual input meeting. So we already had one meeting in the Wilder Art Studio. Um, and so that was our first kickoff meeting. And so this is our second meeting and we're gonna have a third meeting next Monday. That will be in uh, the Country Club Road property. And uh, that will be at 6.30 to 8.30 next Monday. So our normal planning commission meeting would be next week, um, or actually would be the, the following week, but we're going to be next week um, meeting again, just so that way we can get uh, one meeting out in, in the public. We're also going to be having a table at the farmer's market. So we're going to be trying to be out where the people are so we can start getting some input. We also have scheduled some meetings directly with committees. So we'll be meeting with some committees as well to kind of get their input. They help develop these chapters, which I'll get into, and they also will now get an opportunity to kind of review them. So we're gonna have 
a number of opportunities, and I'll talk about that a lot more coming up in a second. Um, so tonight we'll talk a little bit about the background and history of this city plan update. Uh, we'll talk about what is a city plan and why it's important. Uh, we're going to be reviewing three chapters in two parts. So there's actually six pieces, and that'll make more sense in a little bit. And then I'll talk a little bit about our overall input process and then what's how the rest of tonight's going to work. It's going to be a little bit different because we can't do breakout groups in the Zoom, so we'll just have to work together to go through things. So the big thing that always comes up, where to find the plan. So if you go to the city's website, montpelier-vt.org, and you go to that website and you scroll down, maybe halfway down the page, you'll see a bunch of boxes that come up here. And one of them is the city of Montpelier plan um, engagement. So if you were to click on that box, you would end up here. Um, well, you'd end up higher up on the page, which has uh, some of the introductory information on the city plan, what we're doing, what we're doing for input, what's going on. But if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see these three icons. Uh, historic resources, housing, and arts and culture. These are the three icons that take you to the storyboards. So when we talk about the storyboards and the uh, the GIS um, maps, that's all part of these three links here. Now, what's supposed to be down here, and we're still working out with our web folks, is there's supposed to be the three boxes for the implementation strategies. There's one for historic resources, one for housing, and one's for arts and culture. Right now, you have got to click on the PDFs to bring them up. These are the implementation strategies, and we'll go over each one of these pieces later on. But if you're looking to find, how do I find these things? You go to the city website, you click on that link. It'll take you to a page that you can then find these other resources. So some of the background and history of the Montpelier City Plan. For 50 years or probably more, uh, we've had a we've had a city plan for a very very long time. We were one of the earliest ones uh, to get one in the state, um, but for most of its life, it has been called a Montpelier Master Plan. And a master plan is a term of art. And landscape architects and planners always scratch their heads and say, "But this isn't a master plan. This is a city plan." We have finally decided we're just going to change the name of it. We're going to call it the Montpelier City Plan. So that was our decision, uh, the Planning Commission, to change the name. So sometimes you'll hear us refer to it, and you'll hear other people refer to this as the Montpelier Master Plan. And just for clarity, they're probably talking about the same thing. Uh, the most recent update was done in 2010. And it was readopted and amended in 2017, and uh, they're valid for eight years. So this one will be good till December of 25. So we've got about 20 months to finish our process to get this adopted to make sure we don't have a lapse in our city plan. Uh, it's uh, a completely new format and completely new content. So uh, there's no real redlining or being able to strike out and say what's changed. Everything has changed. Um, the old format was a PDF, 200 to 300 page document. And um, so this new format, which we'll go over in a little bit, involves breaking into those two pieces, which we talked about with storyboards and a new, and it'll be a web-based plan, basically is the best way to describe it. The process started in 2016, developing goals and strategies and going to the various committees to develop them. So these were developed, staff developed them, would bring them to the various committees. Committees would review them, provide input, make changes to it. Those would be sent to the planning commission later who would then make changes to it. So um, this is uh, a much changed document over those eight years through uh, the input that we received from the committees themselves. Um, the web-based plan format um, has separate chapters for each topic. Now, this is a little different than the master plan that we currently have. Um, the master plan kind of lumps a lot of things together. We split them into um, 11 separate chapters. Uh, we'll only be reviewing three of them tonight, but there are 11 chapters as things sit right now. And each one is a separate topic. So you, we would have a topic on, say, transportation or housing 
or energy or natural resources or land use. So there's chapters for a lot of these different elements. So um, there is also a new format for the aspirations, goals, and strategies. So we had two goals. Planning Commission kind of had two goals, and I think I'll go over this in the next slide. But this the the goal was to make things uh, make a much more actionable plan. So why is a city plan? Well, what is a city plan, and why is it important? So plans are not required under state law. There's no requirement that the city adopt one, but you are you do need to have one if you want to update or adopt zoning regulations. Um, it's also a requirement if the city wants to participate in either Act 250 or Section 248. Section 248 is the um, it's the public service board. They issue certificates of public good for usually utility related things. So if somebody were building a wind farm or solar panels, that would go through Section 248, not through Act 250. Uh, but if the city themselves wants to participate as an interested person, we first have to have a have a plan to be able to have um, party status. Uh, it's also a necessary uh, necessary requirement for many state and federal grants. Um, not all grants, but uh, if it's not a requirement, you certainly get certainly priority points for having a plan. But if you want to have a state plan, or if you want to have a city plan, you must meet certain state law requirements. It has to be consistent with the state planning goals, has to be compatible with the regional plan, has to be compatible with other plans in the region, and it has to contain the 12 elements of 24 VSA 4382A. And our uh, regional planning commission folks who are with us tonight, that's what they keep talking about when they say they're going to review the city plan to make sure it can get regional approval. That's what they're going to be looking at is these four requirements. Does it meet these four requirements? Um, and... okay. So I have to make sure you uh, try to mute yourself. So oh, down. there we go. So how can a city plan be used? Uh, city, city and town plans are the foundation documents for a number of things, including uh, them just being, it can be a long-term guide. Where's the city trying to go to? What are we trying to accomplish? Uh, it can be a basis for decision-making of programs and investment, action plan with implementation steps. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a basis for municipal regulations and a source of information. Plans can be used in a, in a variety of, of ways. Uh, certain pieces are required, certain pieces are um, just whatever you want to put in a plan. You can put as, uh, put many things into a plan um, once you've met those minimum requirements. So the Planning Commission goals, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier. So the Planning Commission had two big goals when we started working on the new city plan. And the first was to use storyboards instead of written document using storyboards for chapters to give the public and decision makers the background on a topic and what are our goals and generally what are we trying to do to achieve them it's kind of meant to be um those the the plan chapters would be turned into storyboards with hopes that we would be able to uh, convey the information to the public and have it be more accessible to the public. Uh, very few people actually download our, our master plan, our city plans, and we're hoping that this would kind of make more of a document where people might connect to them. Uh, and then for the strategies, we wanted to detail the implementation steps, make an actionable plan uh, in order to achieve the aspirations and goals. Uh, our previous plan has a lot of aspirations and has a lot of goals, but they don't always, it doesn't, it doesn't always tie directly to the strategies. The strategies sometimes, you know, just don't, don't seem to line up or they aren't actionable items. So we really had a very specific process for adopting those strategies to try to make sure it's an actionable plan. And uh, there was a little bit of discussion of this uh, about the overall process. There are 11 chapters. We're doing three of them at a time. Uh, we have uh, 10 of the 11 chapters ready to go. 
The only one that's not ready to go is land use because under there was a bill under state law where they were making a number of changes. We really couldn't finalize that one until after the state uh, legislative cycle is over. So uh, we're going to review three chapters, and then we'll have three chapters and three chapters and then two chapters. So this might take four to six months for us to go through all of the chapters. Um, but we're going to try to have, again, a variety of opportunities from um, in-person events, meeting with uh, committees, uh, farmers market. Uh, we're going to once we've got the posters printed back up again, we're going to put them up in City Hall. Hopefully we've just got to give people a lot of places and opportunities to kind of get some to give input and kind of get to see what we're working on. So as I said, each one of each one of these three will have a minimum of three input opportunities. Um, two that will be live, one that will be virtual. This is our virtual one. Um, once complete, the Planning Commission will review all the comments and make revisions to develop a final public hearing draft. And when that is ready, we will go to the public hearing process. So we might trip up and slip up and say this is a public hearing, but it's not. It's just a public input session. The public hearing process will happen this late this fall, maybe in the winter, depending on when and how much input we get, how much, if we get a lot of input and we have to make a lot of decisions, it might, might take into the winter before we've got our public hearing draft ready to go. After the public, after the planning commission has two public hearings, it will go to city council where they will have two public hearings um, in a minimum of those two. So tonight's topics, getting to the meat and potatoes. Uh, so the three chapters we chose to start with are arts and culture, historic resources, and housing. Each of these three chapters comes in two parts, which we talked about, a storyboard and an implementation strategy. Um, all six pieces are on the website, which we showed you where you could find them. And um, the storyboards are in a web-based format. Each of the storyboards has an introduction, a plan context, synergies. How does this chapter relate to other chapters, basically? A summary of the implementations, strategies, and then who's involved? Who, who's, who are the people who are responsible for accomplishing it? And the implementation strategies are broken into three pieces. You've got your aspirations, which are your vision, your goals, which break your vision into smaller pieces. And then your strategies are those actionable pieces to achieve the goals. So if we, if we do our strategies, will we accomplish our goals? If we accomplish our goals, will we accomplish our vision? That's what the Planning Commission has always kind of gone back to, to make sure that we're building a good strategic plan. And this is basically what they look like. On the left, you've got the historic resources chapter. This is how it starts out with an overview of the historic resources. And I'll pull these up and we'll review them one at a time um, and take questions on them. And on the right, this is um, basically what the start of the implementation strategies look like. This is historic resources. We have an aspiration at the top. We've got three different goals and we'll go over them afterwards. And then a number of implementation strategies. Um, there's a there'll be a, a discussion of an item. You know, it'll just say you know in this case, designated downtown program, and it'll describe what it is. So if you're interested in understanding more about what it is and how it relates to the goals, um, hopefully that's where you can get some more information. And then there's also some priorities and costs and who's responsible. Uh, we think it's very important to make sure that there there is a priority. Uh, not everything can be a high priority, so we've got high, medium, and low. There's a cost factor, and then there's also who's responsible. Um, because if nobody's responsible, usually things don't get done. So we need to put somebody's name to it or somebody's title to it so we can make sure that it gets done over the next eight years. And it's also, keep in mind, an eight-year plan. So it's not meant that everything would be done all at once. This may take uh, eight years before we get to all the different elements. So the rest of tonight. So I'll be jumping out of the PowerPoint uh, and I'll take any quick questions at the start. Um, but what we'll then do is I'll bring up the storyboards and the strategies and we can walk through them. And what we're looking for, the Planning Commission is, you know, we really just want your opinions from, from general opinions to very specific ones. What do you like and not like about the various elements? Um, you know, does it make sense? Um, do you have specific comments about some of the content? Are there things that, uh, are missing 
Uh, and if you, or maybe you just have questions that we can answer for you and we can try to go and explain them. And you can obviously email comments later and we'll show you other places, uh, especially in the storyboards where you would have an opportunity to, to provide comments right in the document itself. So I'll take a second here to see if there are any questions right at the start from anything I presented. Otherwise, I'll stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to go and share it. That one, one in that I need. I need to move this guy. So I can go to this. So we had talked let me move this real quick down to the bottom. So we had talked earlier about how to find this. So let me just go and show. So when you went on the main City of Montpelier website, I'll walk you guys right through it. If you're looking for this, once you get some free time, you go to the city website, you scroll down, you'll find the, the link right here and you can click on it and it takes you to the city plan page. And as you scroll down, you'll see the various icons. And so we can click on historic resources for our first icon here. And this is the historic resources storyboard. So this would be what normally would be a, a chapter in a written PDF. So the historic resources, overview of historic resources and the goals of preservation. You'll see the various topics here, the introduction, the planning context synergies. These are in every single chapter and they're all done in very similar formats. So the introduction, and I'm not going to go and read through everything. Um, you, you'll have plenty of time to be able to do that on your own. But the introduction is just really just that, just um, to kind of give folks an idea of what's what we're talking about. These are the three goals of our historic resources. Um, this helps to explain how they're important, why they're important. And the nice thing about storyboards is the ability to add in a lot of images and imagery. Um, Planning Context, Montpelier has a remarkably intact historic downtown that is unique in Vermont. It is a very large historic district, as you'll see. Um, a lot of the downtown is built of brick and stone. And that is the result of fires from the 19th century. This city burned down more than once. And uh, as it got rebuilt, every time it got rebuilt, they built more and more back in brick and stone. That's why much of our downtown is the way it looks. Uh, despite our well-documented nature of our downtown, much of the rest of the city needs additional study. So this is a re an occur reoccurring theme that you'll see with historic resources is we have a very well-understood, well-documented, well-studied National Register Historic District. And this is a, the historic district. I'm just going to shrink that up for me. If you happen to be here, you've got the ability to move around. Um, so if you're within the storyboard and you want to zoom in, you can zoom in within the storyboard and zoom back out. Um, so it's the the map portion of it is very dynamic for you to be able to look around and zoom in and see where things are so our national register historic district if you're interested in that uh, it actually extends past the bailey ave on state street it's almost all of state street through the capitol complex it includes the main street past the roundabout you'll see it goes all the way out to the main street middle school and goes out uh, route 12 which is elm street uh, out to a good chunk of the meadow. Uh, these buildings here are the Pioneer Street uh, apartments. So it's a it's a very large, it's 
535 contributing structures. This is the college campus up here and Berry Street out to Granite Street. Um, so it's a very large, it is the largest in the state and one of the largest in the Northeast. And it's also one of the most intact. So we have this very, very well studied. It was just re-studied back in 2018, historic district. But once you leave the historic district and that line was supposed to stay on and it didn't. So <clears throat> I have a note for our consultants to put that line back in so you can see the other areas, so you'd see what's not, quote, not the well-documented downtown. Um, so we have a little bit of some other points. You see these red points are, again, areas that have been studied, but these were historic surveys from 1975 and 6. So they're very old surveys, but we don't have very much information out here on the historic buildings. So that is what um the historic the plan and the historic commission are looking at we have a well documented downtown but we need to study the rest of the town more because we don't have a good survey of what the rest of the town looks like um so we have two prong approach to protecting historic resources and again you can zoom in and out in these maps this is the designated downtown there are a lot of benefits here. Uh, we wanted to keep, and I'm going to have them put back in the, we should also put in around this, the the natural National Register District boundaries, just so you can see the difference. This is only a portion of that National Register District that is within the designated downtown. Um, and it makes a difference. This is an area where there are a lot of benefits to historic buildings. Um, you can get tax credits, you can get things to fix up and repair historic buildings using state and federal money. And we also have uh, our design review district and our capital complex. So the capital complex commission is a state appointed commission who does the um, review of any projects within the capital. That's the state capital. That is the pavilion building and state street so this is you know what you generally see as the cap as the core area the rest of the area including the high school and these other areas are in our design review district which the city regulates and we have specific rules to protect historic character and this one disappeared so we're not sure i've got to find out what happened with the the map for this one but moving into the future we need to go and look at some other things including archaeology and a few other pieces so um, so as I said, that's the plan context. You'll see that in all of them. The synergies talks about how does historic resources relate to other plan chapters. Um, in this case, housing, economic development, land use, and energy have been called out for various reasons. Um, for example, according to the 2020 census, 69% of the dwelling units were built before 1970, an age that would qualify them as historic. So for the most part, um, 69% of 70% of the people live in historic buildings. So we can't talk about historic resources without talking about housing. We can't talk about housing without talking about historic resources um, just because they're one and the same. Um, and when it comes to energy, historic buildings are challenges and opportunities. They weren't build with, built with energy efficient materials. Um, so that's, um, a problem, but they also are have a lot of embedded energy in them. So 11% of all CO2 emissions can be attributed to new building materials and construction. So maintaining and rehabilitating old buildings saves uh, energy efficiency. So um, again, I won't go through all of these. The goals and aspirations, these are the same that you will see in the next part that comes up. There's a summary. So if somebody just wanted to get an understanding, a basic understanding, they should be able to read through the storyboard and have an understanding um, of what's going on. You'd then be able to click this link and it would take you to the next piece, which we'll get to, um, if you wanted to dig deeper. And then the last piece is who's involved. So this talks about the Montpelier Historic, uh, com uh, the Historic Preservation Commission who is a certified local government, um, the capital complex, 
also plays a role and the, D the DRC, the design review committee also plays a role. So we have three players. So if somebody kind of wants to understand what's going on, you, you have those opportunities. And then right now we also have at the end of the storyboard, an opportunity to provide feedback. There are a couple of um, slider bar questions on your overall response to the content, um, to the format. What did you like? What do you think could be approved? You could submit this. This would get sent to my email. And then in the future, these links aren't active right now, but in the future, if you wanted to learn more or wanted to see previous studies, we're going to have those linked in this document. So you could be able to go directly to learn more about the plan, um, previous studies, or explore the chapters. So let me take a quick break here and see if people have questions on this. And I won't go in as much depth to the next two, unless you guys want me to really go into that much detail. I just wanted to give you a sense of what it is, what a storyboard is. This is a storyboard. They have maps, they have introductions, they have these pieces, but um, don't know if somebody has specific questions right now, or I'll show you an example of the implementation strategies. All right, well, I'll jump forward. And again, uh, this is opportunities to provide input, but it's also an opportunity to learn what this is all about. So uh, let me see, I think I opened historic. It's housing. All right, well, we'll just go back and open the next one. Historic resources. So if you click on that link, And I'm going to just zoom in so you get a better chance to see it. Yeah, maybe you need a little more. And you'll have the ability to zoom in and out. Um, but historic resources, um, the aspiration. So the aspiration is meant to be the big picture. What are we trying to do? Uh, Montpelier would be a community that understands, appreciates, and preserves our historic resources. So there are kind of three pieces to that. It's pretty obvious. So the goals break into three pieces. And you'll see this a lot in whether, you know, as we describe the difference between goals and aspirations, goals tend to be taking our aspirations and breaking them into a number of pieces. So they're bite-sized pieces. Um, so the example I like to use is if you want safe and affordable housing as an aspiration, you're going to have a goal for safe housing and a goal for affordable housing. And that's because the strategies to make safe housing are probably different than the strategies used to make affordable housing. Uh, they're probably different things. And so we really can't have a set of strategies to achieve both of those goals. Some things we can group together because they'll, they'll have similar strategies, but sometimes you've got ones that are different. And in this case, We've got three different goals. One is um, we want to identify and document the city's historic resources. The second is we want to increase opportunities for community appreciation of historic resources. So we want to, um, the Historic Preservation Commission felt they were having a hard time um, a few years ago working on efforts to protect our historic resources. And they felt the reason why is just because people didn't understand them and they didn't appreciate them. If people appreciate historic resources, they'll want to protect them. That's why the HPC wants to have more effort to have community outreach and engagement to help people appreciate our very unique historic resources. This is a very unique downtown. Um, it, it can't be overstated. Um, uh, the, 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 integrity of our downtown in the historic resources is is they have historic conferences here for a reason um, we haven't had a lot of our buildings get bulldozed and replaced and the last piece is what do we do to continue and create new means to protect our historic resources and then we have a whole set of various implementation strategies and the way we've arranged them here is to go through um, and some of them, just achieve one goal. So in this case, um, do historic uh, 
Historic Surveys Program. It's a program, it's something that's new, but it really helps us achieve just one of our goals, the identifying and documenting. But some of the other pieces, like a certified local government, may help us achieve all three of our goals. So that's what the stars are for. That's what the, the numbers represent, to try to help people um, orient themselves to um, what are we going to do to protect and create new resources? You can just look for the red stars. And those are all the ones that would be doing number three. Uh, so it gives you kind of a quick way to find find things. But each one of these is a separate program. When we did them, or, or I say separate program, we have programs, we have projects, we have regulations, we have policies, uh, and uh, probably for day, forgetting projects, unless I did uh, plans, projects, yeah, plans, projects, programs, policies, and regulations, permits, the five Ps. Um, but these are the ones, I think there are 11 of them that the Historic Preservation Commission and the city came up and the Planning Commission came up with to help us accomplish our goals. Uh, Capital Complex Commission Agreement, uh, Historic Preservation Outreach Initiative, so that helps us getting people to appreciate it uh, and also helps people to meet their regulatory requirements. Tax stabilization programs, uh, to do a study of preservation programs to help owner-occupied houses. We've got a lot of programs to help commercial properties that are historic, but no programs to help owner-occupied. Historic Preservation Commission wants to study that. Some zoning regulations, the Unified Development Bylaws. So that's a, a quick view. This one only has one page. The other ones have more than one page. But this gives you a quick snapshot of what we have. The intention is that these were made to be printed out as posters. We've gotten them so they could be printed out on 11 by 17, but uh, Evelyn is currently working on trying to convert these so they could be printed at eight and a half and 11, uh, eight and a half by 11 if people wanted to print them out. It's going to be tricky because it's going to obviously make money more pages, but we're working on trying to format those so they could be printed out, but they do print out well and can be read at, at 11 by 17 if you have a printer that can print at that size. So let me take a moment to stop here to see if there are any comments on just the outline that we did for the historic resources. So, all right. I'll jump on to housing here. And again, our plan to achieve housing for all. You'll see the same topics, um, including providing feedback. So if there's feedback you, you see when you review these at home, anyone on Orca or anyone watching this later on, you got the opportunity to review these, make some inputs. Uh, so again, uh, there's an introduction to what it is we're trying to do, ensure the availability of a variety of housing types and options to truly address the housing shortage. So we're not looking at one thing, we're looking at um, many housing types. Um, so it's not just renter and owner occupied, it's um, single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, um, you know, it's condos, it's congregate housing. It's all sorts of options. We want a variety of options. People go through transitions in their lives and housing needs change. We want people to be able to be born here, live here, and age right through um, whatever part of life they are. They shouldn't have to leave Montpelier because um, their, their housing needs change. And then the second piece is to take a housing for all approach that extends to persons living in vulnerable circumstances and accommodating different life stages. So we're trying to really think as broadly as we can about making sure that we're touching on um, all these things. Obviously, we aren't there yet. This is all about how we're going to try to get there. So again, it's uh, back to being dynamic. In this case, we've got some data that information we got have coming up. And the map on the side, 
and again, we can, these are all the single family dwelling units um, that are in the city. So again, you welcome to zoom in if you are interested in seeing where they are. Um, you want to see where the multifamily dwelling units are. We're going to clean a couple of these up because I think there are a couple of them that we've got to make sure like condominiums. I know there are more condominiums and for some reason, um, you know, um, Murray Hill doesn't show his condos, but there are condos up in there. So we've got a couple of cleaning up pieces to do on the condos. One mobile homes, um, there aren't any. So we'll probably remove that tab. Um, our consultant put that in because that was, those are all the ones that are listed as ones in our grand list. But technically, we have only have a handful of mobile homes. We don't have any mobile home parks. We do have mobile homes. We don't have mobile home parks. And other residential that includes special housing, memory care facilities, group homes, and accessory dwelling units. So again, this should look a little bit familiar. This is our designated downtown boundary. And this is showing the orange buildings as those are residential buildings and your green are your either mixed use or commercial buildings. So you'll see a majority of our residential units are outside. Uh, this will let you review by age where the oldest buildings and work your way through to find you know, where the buildings that were built today um, within the last 23 years. So, and I know there are still a couple of them kicking out there. Now that's different things, not always the number of units. So some of those may be many units. And then there's this one. This one actually can be amended based on the council agreement last week. So I'm going to go through and have that fixed. So these are all dynamic as we're talking about the this is, this is our existing growth center that you see here, but we are actually applying to make it bigger. So that's our designated downtown that we showed you. The benefits apply to historic resources. They also apply to housing developers. So that's why this strategy appears in both. Um, and then synergies again, in this case, the synergies for housing, our natural resources, energy, historic resources, again, transportation, and economic development. So I won't go through all of those, but housing has a has an oversized impact on a lot of other things. Uh, housing is a key driver for 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 many uh, for many things. You can't you can't get employment if you don't have a house. Uh, you can't. You know, there's just a lot that comes into to housing. And again, these aspirations and goals, there are two aspirations and six goals. These are the same ones that appear in the strategy. And this is a summary of those tables that you'll see. And if you were to click on this, when it's active, this would send you to that implementation strategy. Who is responsible? It's the housing committee is our primary responsible party for doing a lot of these uh, projects. And the did you know, we try to put a did you know into every single one of our chapters. In this case, did you know the housing committee has been part of developing 124 subsidized housing units, bringing the total number of subsidized units to 382, which is approximately 9% of the residential units in Montpelier. So. And again, opportunities for feedback. So let me pause there before I go to the strategies, see if there's anyone who wants to. And again, these we, we recognize that going through it at this speed, it's um, when we meet in person, the, the objective is that we would have breakout groups and we'd be able to, to take input on each one of the pieces and you'd have an opportunity to kind of review them a little more carefully. But again, um, at this point, uh, Peter, and I don't know if you can, can you unmute mute yourself? Can you hear me? Yep. Um, Mike, you said a couple of things I just want to ask about that in relation to the housing committee. You said that you want um, 
uh, the, the, this plan to be much more actionable than the last plan. And you also said that this plan was much changed since the last plan. Um, I've been through the historic chapter and strategies uh, oh, quite a few times over the last two or three years as this plan has been going on. And I still see things listed here that were from the old plan and uh, are things that we aren't necessarily going to do. Um, I mean, I, I the, the uh, for example, um, the neighborhood development area program. Montpelier doesn't participate in this program. Why is it here? It, and it's 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 kind of uh, prominent. Um, the unified development regulations, which is our zoning laws regulations, of course they're in here. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that have been in here for a long time. Um, so I, I, I think we need to distinguish between what is really new and what is being continued. And you say continued, continued, and you'll see that the housing, a lot of it is just continuation. We're being, we're faced with a housing crisis right now. We not, not only that, but when we talk about resiliency, we mean more than just flood. And I've made this point now for three years. Why are you just saying flood resiliency? We have flood resiliency, we have the pandemic, we have the, we have the not just the flood itself, but the FEMA regulations that have put our uh, homeowners and, and business owners into very difficult circumstances. Similarly, uh, if you talk about the pandemic, where is any mention of the fact that we no longer have state wor workers coming to work in the town uh, as, as we used to? Where in the plan are, are we looking at the fact that we have people who've moved here from other, from other states and are working remotely from their homes? The, the, all of these things have a big impact on us. I don't see these in the plan. I don't see the new. And I, I've said detailed comments to you and the uh, Planning Commission over the last couple of years, and I can do it again, but I certainly would like to have a general re response to where is this addressing Montpelier today and for the next eight years? And we, so, yes, we are, we are going to go and review all of the comments you've sent. And uh, it does have, when I refer to the old plan, I'm referring to the, the, the 2017 plan. And that's a very different plan um, from what you see here. A lot of the implementation strategies are not in that, in that specific plan. So when I talk about the, the completely new, I'm referring back to the 2017 master plan, um, not to earlier versions of this uh, city implementation strategy. And again, the, the planning commission has had a lot, um, has done a lot over the past couple of years, not all of it on the city plan. So these are various pieces, but um, the comment on, just jump to it here. So, the jump uh, housing, and let me roll back up to the top. So this is what Peter is referring to. So we've got two housing strategies, uh, six housing goals, and we've got ones that are in here, unified development regulations. Uh, let me see if I can find the ones. So this, these these are relatively new as of this afternoon. We the, the earlier ones, most of the content is the same, but we've tried to move them around and reformat them and make them easier for viewing and printing. And um, and let me just pull that one up. Neighborhood development areas. So this is recommended to be a new program. So the neighborhood development area is a program of the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development, which provides benefit to housing developers through tax incentives or exemptions from state permitting. Montpelier currently does not participate in this program, but does participate in the designated downtown and growth center programs, which are related programs. So um, these have been uh, recommended by the staff. They've been recommended to move forward and uh, it's currently 
But the goal doesn't say, Mike, priority. the goal doesn't say that. The goal just describes it and says we don't participate. The goal should say we recommend we are going to do this. Well, this is an implementation strategy. Where, um, where's, the, the where's, strategy is. Where's the verb? Where's the implementation verb? It's not there. This is just a description of the program and a statement that we don't participate. It doesn't say that we will participate. And I've got that problem with a lot of the goals. The goals are not actionable. They're just descriptions. And some of the descriptions aren't very accurate. All right, we will review that because it's these are intended to be the strategies that would implement the plan. So that's why they are the way they are. But I can certainly see how adding that in would make a difference in context. So uh, I'll work with Evelyn to try to see if we can clarify those. Um, but that is the intent is that these are the programs and you'll note for anybody who's new here that each one of the strategies had to go through a specific process. Um, there's what the task is, um, country club road master plan and implementation. Is it something new? Is it something we're continuing? Is it something that, um, that we're amending? I mean, there, there are a couple of different ways um, continue, amend, and new are the three designations to try to help people if you are reading it to understand. And again, we'll take Peter's point that we need to clarify this more that there's a lot of things that we already do. And so we wanted to make sure we captured them. So if somebody didn't know anything about housing and what we did for housing, you could go through and see, um, we do have a program or a, a project in this case for Country Club Road. It's a continuing project. We uh, don't have tax increment financing. We're looking to renew it. But That's right a description there, of look, what it is. Look at look at the tax increment funding. Your last sentence tells you what the, you're recommending. The city should consider reapplying to use the program to support uh, and so forth. And if states, that's you need a statement like that for each one of these. What is the recommendation? not just a description. That one is well done. The Country Club road, road one is well done. Those both show what you're proposing. But many of these others don't really show what you're proposing. They just say, oh, okay. yeah, something we do. Yep. Nope. Uh, nope. I hear I hear you. And we'll go through and make sure that that's in there. I mean, again, for, for, for those of us who had been working on it, it was, it's been a, a compilation of adjusting over time. And sometimes the something can get lost in translation. So we'll have to make sure that each one of them has a statement that goes through and says, uh, has that action action statement in it. But these are the various things, as we said, like designated downtown program. Um, in in this case, you'll also notice there's a link that uh, when, we, when this gets completed, there'd be a link to the state benefits. So if somebody were interested in learning more, you could link to, to be more. The idea of these is to help give people an opportunity to um, really get a sense of what's going on. The one piece we fixed somewhat, and we're going to go through and make a second shot at fixing. So these will get adjusted again later this week. Uh, uh, we asked um, Evelyn, who is helping us to prioritize and put the highest priorities at the top and work your way down, um, which she did. But did them for each page separately. So what we want to be able to do is to move the high priority pieces from page two to move them to page one. So you might see some shuffling that will happen um, because we want to have all the highest priorities at the top of our page and the lower and the medium priorities on the second page. So that way the, the things you'll see are the most important. Um, but again, the idea is you should be able to, um, especially if you are on a committee or are really interested in understanding, you know, um, we, we, you know, we kind of think of the policy wonks for people who really want to get into the nut, nit, nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts, you should be able to get in here and kind of get a sense of what's going on. And that, that was our intent of what we're trying to do with this. Um, 
and uh, to try to get these moved up. And again, we'll go through and double check everything and make sure we get those shuffled back around. But that those are the goals. Um, I'll just read off the aspirations. The two aspirations we have for housing. Uh, we'll have an adequate supply of safe and flood resilient housing that meets the needs of all current and future residents. And Montpelier will affirmatively further fair housing in order to protect all people from discrimination, promote economic opportunities, and create a more diverse and inclusive community. So those were the aspirations. And it breaks into six goals. Increase the number of homes in Montpelier by a minimum of 30 units per year. Maintain a mix of housing types, sizes, occupancies, and costs. Improve the safety, health, flood resiliency of our homes. Increase the number of homes that are universally accessible on the first floor. Maintain the city's commitment to affirmatively further fair housing and accessible housing by focusing on areas where needs are not currently met. And the last is to increase support for partners in development of housing that are not provided by the private market. So um, number, a lot of these we do, but this is big picture um, understanding. We've gotten a lot of comments already on what we should be changing on these, but again, this is where the the housing committee got to and the planning commission got to, and now we're taking the public comment. Um, all right, and uh, we'll take your comment, Peter. And again, we know we've gotten a lot of written comments from you, uh, so try to try to keep to new to newer comments on things. You should be able to unmute yourself. Sorry. Why isn't energy efficient mentioned in the goals or aspirations? Am I missing it? Uh, it it was in the earlier drafts, and I uh, somewhere along the way there was a vote to remove it. So uh, I'd I'd have to go ex back and see exactly why it was um, removed. But it it had been in earlier drafts. But at some point there was a vote either on one of the committees or the planning commission to remove it from that one. It is in the energy chapter. Well, okay. But I, I, I think you should th think about that again. That's certainly a major challenge for housing. And again, I would say, again, I don't know why we're saying just flood. I think it's, it's uh, we, we need to resiliency in the face of climate change. It's not just flood. All well, right. We'll certainly, we'll certainly have a discussion on that point. We've, we've got that and you, you've mentioned a couple of times you have it in, in your written comment. So we'll certainly be talking about that. Okay, thanks. All right, and I'll take, I'll jump the last for the last one, just to make sure we get through everyone so everyone gets an opportunity to kind of um, see all the different chapters and then we can talk about whatever we want in whatever order we want. Uh, Arts and culture was the last one. Uh, this chapter really kind of came out be following on the public art master plan. So um, it, I, we've recognized and had a few people comment that it kind of talked more about public art and maybe it needs to have more about um, more other, other pieces of art, um, the, our, our studios, and th there's more to art than public art. So we certainly recognize there may be room for making adjustments to this chapter. Again, same thing, an introduction, and then our planning context, talking about striving to have a thriving artistic community. And we completed the public art master plan. Um, the map here explores Montpelier's most notable cultural and artistic attractions. We'll have to go and make sure we're not missing things. So we've got Vermont Historical Society, Kellogg Hubbard, Lost Nation, T.W. Wood, Capital Cinema, Savoy, Center for Arts and Learning, Wilder Arts, um, I'm sure people are going to tell us we're missing things, and that is perfectly fine. Um, and we will add, we can add those markers into the various maps that we have. We also have a gallery. We went through and got pictures of 38 public art pieces. And I think we originally had a map which you could link on them in the same way that they were here. Um, but I'm not sure if we still have that as an opportunity as, as an option. But um, synergies with other plans. 
uh, missing our, should have our picture for synergies. Let me make a note of that. Uh, so uh, the arts chapter is closely tied to economic development, transportation, utilities, facilities, community services, and natural resources. So there's a lot that arts and culture connects to and ties to. And this kind of discusses those elements. Um, the implementation summary, again, these are the same as you would see on the table. So if somebody were just going through wanting to get a sense of what's going on, you'd get them. Um, two aspirations and then maybe six goals again. Then again, a quick summary of what's in there. If you wanna see that table that we will show you in a minute, you'd be able to click here. Um, did you know Montpelier hosts an art walk event every other month that showcases public art throughout Montpelier? In October, 2023, the art walk had a theme of renewal following the historic floods of 2023. And who's involved? Um, public Art Commission, and Montpelier Alive are two of the key players. And again, more opportunities for feedback. And I don't see that I've opened the link to arts and culture. So the last of the six pieces um, are the, is the, again, the, the implementation strategy. And did this one get, oh, it got loaded backwards. So page two is page one. I'll have to get that switched. As I said, these were loaded this afternoon, so we didn't get a chance to catch a few things. So aspirations, Montpelier will have public art thoroughly integrated into our urban landscape. And our second aspiration is Montpelier will have a thriving, will have thriving studios, galleries, theaters, and other venues, and will be recognized as a destination and home for artists. And we have the six, five goals uh, to help implement those. And then a number of policy, uh, of, of items, again, to help implement and achieve those goals. Um, a lot of them are new because uh, we haven't had these programs before. And so the Public Arts Commission and others uh, were trying to encourage Montpelier Alive and other groups to take ownership and, and advance some of these. The Public Arts Fund, we already have one. Uh, we want to grow it, so that's amend. Um, public art display, we, have, we need to make formal policies. A lot of these come out of the public art master plan. And it said, these are the things, when you start up a public arts committee, you should have policies on these things. Some of them we've done, some of them we haven't. Um, doing an inventory, we haven't done an inventory. Um, again. And these are a little bit backwards because this is page two and this is the rest. This is act an actual, there's an actual art sculpture that's going to be showing up that looks just like this apparently, my understanding is. Langdon Street Alive, tourism program. Um, to have a Montpelier cultural plan. So we had a public arts plan, we didn't have a cultural plan. So we really need to fill in that second half that's missing um, in this chapter. but. Um, we really just need to go and, and put that in as a plan that's going to focus on ways of incorporating public um, performing arts, art education, support services. So, and again, as people have time to sit down and read these and review these and, and, and give us input, or what are we missing? What are some strategies that would better accomplish those? Paivon. You should be able to unmute yourself. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I'll send it more detailed um, comment later, but I just on first glance, I have looked at all these previously, but just on first glance, now looking at them again here, um, I would like to um, just uh reiterate kind of what you had said about some other comments about this focusing uh primarily on public art and that um that causes quite a limitation just because our built environment and um there's only so much canvas we have in the city 
and that it also prioritizes visual art, uh, which is only just one discipline in the many different kinds of arts that make a culturally vibrant place. Um, so I would love it if we could consider being even more inclusive of the arts by having um, a goals to kind of foster all those different ways in which creative expression um, occurs. And then um, in the goals, um, it's great that we want to have strong galleries and places that support the arts, but I don't see anything that addresses supporting the artists themselves, because if we want this to be a home for artists, um, that we need to actually have infrastructure that supports um, professional artists, working artists, so that we can actually have them make use of all these great resources that we want to have. So that's uh, my general comment. Thanks. Good. And I look forward to your specific comments, because I know you have a lot of, also, um, Ivan was uh, exec was director of Montpelier Alive for a number of years, too. So she's very familiar with the programs that are offered through through that side as well. But We'll, we'll need to know, the more we can get from you, the better on specific programs and things that we can do. Because uh, again, this is a list of what, what what can we do over the next eight years and what are the things we can try to check off and get, get to um, improve. Um, do we have other thoughts? All right. Well, those those were the the basic, and I know we went through everything really fast. And what are we at seven o'clock? So that was about an hour to kind of go through six, three storyboards and three implementation strategies. Um, yes, Pivon again. Are you trying to unmute yourself again? Um, no, that was an nope. accidental raise hand. I'm sorry, I'm on my okay. phone. I have no more comment. <laughs> All right. So that was a relatively quick. We didn't know how long it would take to go through three storyboards and three implementation strategies, but we wanted to give everyone a flavor of what these are, what they look like. Um, and sometimes if you've got a chance to send us an email, whether it's to a planning commissioner or to to myself, um, uh, my contact information appears in a lot of places, but it's mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. And um, even if it's general comments, we like the approach. We like the storyboards and the, the strategies, or we don't like it. It, it helps us to, um, the planning commission and I, to move forward as we make decisions to know we're on the right path and we're moving. Um, but we need to make, specific changes to these goals or these strategies or um and and so that's really where we're moving through these three chapters we'll go to the next three chapters and uh we'll just keep working our way through but specific comments general comments anything uh and we're hoping that folks like this new change um and that it's going to help to be uh getting more input from um, people in, over time. The, the hope is that when people are Googling and when people are looking at stuff, um, it's going to actually pop up and they're going to get to our website. If people Google housing Montpelier, that you'd actually end up with our housing plan and you'd have a better opportunity to get some direct input of what we're trying to do as our goals and policies. And then people will have an opportunity to give input to their city councilors and commissioners and planning directors as to what they like or don't like and what changes we want. Um, there's, we just think this would be a lot, uh, give a lot of opportunity for folks. Uh, Peter, you got one more comment in there? I do, but I lost my hand. Uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, Mike. So I've been to two of these meetings and I think uh, my, I'm, my, my, count might be off, but I don't think there's been more than 10 people in the two meetings combined participating. Um, what is yours and the uh, Planning Commission's plan 
for how to get more people to provide feedback and to actually um, re, re, you know, go to go to the website and see it. I mean, the materials that you just showed us didn't appear on the website in this chain in this since until this afternoon. So, I personally think you need to work through the committees. Make the committees be your PR group. Have each committee ha devote a meeting or two meetings to the uh, to to the ch the chapter that most affects them, and and have the committees do outreach for you. I, po posting a front porch forum and sending and notifications is not going to get any more than you've gotten so far, in my opinion. Okay, and as I said, we we are ramping this up. It's been a learning curve for us, and it's also some things take longer than than we anticipate as we're working through them. So we have we knew we wanted to make those amendments. The old ones were up. The content really hasn't changed between what was on before. So if you were to read the public art program from three or four weeks, it's been up now um, to this version, the, the text is the same. Everything is the same. It's just we've reformatted to try to make it um, better organized and um, to better convey information. But we are going to continue to increase our outreach. As we said, we are going to be meeting with committees. That is our plan to, to either send it directly to committees, to have it on their agenda, to get on there. Uh, again, these were originally developed with the committees, but we now have to go back and make sure that everybody knows what's in the final plan because the housing committee may have made a recommendation that the planning commission voted to remove or change. And so um, we will be going back and trying to touch base with those. But our big point of the six months is really to try to make sure the broader public, we, we're trying to make sure we get outside of um, just the committee. So that's why we, we are, uh, Evelyn and I have reserved space at the farmer's market. So we are going to have a table at the farmer's market, uh, I think starting this weekend. If it's not this weekend, it's the following weekend, but I think it's this weekend where we can start to be able to have uh, a table and just get to see people from the public, get, you know, and have people come up and see what's going on. Um, Again, these are uh, all poster size, what you see in front of us. Um, and we're going to print them back out on posters and put them back up. And we're going to try to keep them in the city hall lobby. So that way people can walk up, write on cards, or just get to see them. Um, can't print out the website, uh, the storyboards yet. But we're going to try to work on finding a way of getting those so they're visual as well. So people can get to go and see them. It's a little tricky, but we'll see what we can come up with for that. But again, our goal is to try to get out, get as much input as we can, and then and then review it and make improvements. Our hope is we're on the right path and um, we're going to keep improving what we have and moving forward. And eventually, all of these pieces, and I'll specifically go and say uh, these pieces, they'll be on their own website. Uh, right now, they're on the city website, but in the future, there'll be a separate link from the city's webpage to another page because all of these other links that exist on the site, uh, the ones at the bottom, they all connect. There's a landing page and tiles, so you can choose any of the 10, 11 chapters, and that takes you to the various storyboards. Then there's these other additional resources pages, so we've got these other pieces, and those will all come together once we've got the various chapters approved. So, um, so I'm going to stop sharing because I can always reshare and see if there are any other comments that anyone wants to provide. And then otherwise, I'll turn it back over to Ariane. And thank you, everybody, for coming out and giving us some time and giving some thoughts. And we look forward to hearing from other, any other thoughts that anybody has on, on each of these chapters. Yeah, and just another um, reminder again that we're gonna have another meeting next Monday, 6.30 at the Alps, correct? 
but I have that <laughs> right. June yes. 3rd, Monday, June 3rd, 6 30. Um, and I know, you know, our outreach efforts have been imperfect, but any, um, you know, word of mouth, I think is really the most effective way to spread information about these meetings. So I encourage you to talk to neighbors and friends about um, that meeting and any, um, you know, that meeting, and then we'll schedule some other meetings as we move through the other chapters. Um, and also, right, I mean, we can also email you directly, Mike, with comments, right? Yes, as you, yep. as these will stated, be open. So. Yep, these will be open right, right through. So the advantage of these first three chapters is even as we're working on the next three chapters, these will still be there. We're not taking these down and removing them. Uh, they'll still be there, and we're just going to add to them as we add the next three and um, keep moving through, as we said, all all the chapters. Hopefully, by this fall, we'll have 10, 11 chapters done. Yeah, that's, that's an ambitious goal. Um, so I guess, th are there any other um, general business uh, I forget what that item is. Yeah. Uh, any... General business is usually at the start. Uh, That's for yeah. any ob any item that is uh, not on the agenda that people want to comment Thank on. You. <laughs> yes. Any other comments from the public about items that are not related to the public input meeting that are not on the agenda? Peter. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I was very interested uh, to hear Christian um, from the... Uh, Christian Meyer, what does CVHPC stand for? CVRPC. So that is the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Okay. Um, and he kept talking about programs and plans that the Planning Committee Commission was doing or might be doing for, and encouraging you to reach out to him. Has the Planning Commission been thinking about any of these uh, programs uh, that um, that he described, uh, particularly, uh, I, I I was I, I don't know some of you were went to the um, resiliency meeting at the senior center uh, uh, last week. I, I was very impressed with that. I, there was a lot of energy, a lot of positivity, and people really seemed ready to roll up their sleeves. Is the planning commission involved in any of this? Planning Commission hasn't specifically been involved. The Planning Department has. We work. We work very closely. Um, so Josh has been working with um, Keith Kubin, who is doing the Rivers program. So that's the one that one of the programs that was mentioned. Um, the transportation program. Um, Donna Bate has been on that committee for a long time. She worked closely with Zach and Kurt to connect up those programs. So we, we're definitely in touch with them about, and they are in, also in touch with the Resiliency Committee as well about the various programs and, and how these things can overlap. Um, I, they're, I, they're a conduit to the, to the state and federal money and the Brownfields guess, program we've worked with. But I guess my question is, he seemed to think that the Planning Commission would be reaching out to him or could reach out to him or might be concerned about these things or might want to con what how about the planning commission what how do you guys see your role Not, uh, as a part you know i i know that of course that the planning department does that but what about the planning commission why did he come to see you we missed the start of it so there's a uh, every four years the Regional Planning Commission has to do a, a planning confirmation um, for the state. So not only do we have plan reviews, but they also have to confirm our planning process. Uh, it's really a formality when it comes to the communities like Montpelier and Barry City, but they come in and they, they do them. And a lot of his discussion when he's referring to the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission is because these are kind of his stock presentation that he gives to most communities. And in a lot of communities, you know, uh, I think there are 23 communities in the in their region, in our region, and probably five of them have staff. So most of the time he's talking to planning commissions to say, if you want to participate, 
the volunteers on the commission have to participate in these to make them happen because you don't have paid staff. Um, we usually do that work through the through the planning department and same with Barry City, same with Waterbury, same with um, the different ones because we've got paid staff. We work directly with them on emergency management and water quality efforts and brownfields. Um, but they like to, uh, to educate maybe a town of Callis. They might go through and say, hey, this is what we offer. We've got brownfields. If you've got a brownfield site, you guys are going to have to reach out to us to let us know so we can work with you on doing the brownfield cleanup. Um, whereas in our case, we usually know ahead of time and we would already reach out um, to do a brownfield or a river program or these other ones. But um, yes, so so yes, that's generally why um, it's usually the the staff that's reaching out. Thanks. Okay, are there any other questions or comments from the public that other items? Okay, well, I think we can move to adjournment if somebody wants to move to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Great. Any objection? Oh, you need a second. Oh, I do need a second for that. Okay, go ahead. Is there second. a second? Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. We'll see you all next Monday at 6.30 at the Elks. Yes. Thank you, everybody.